There was no small independent brands. You were a massive brand or that was it. My husband will sometimes would be like, yeah, she designed that. Like, I'm like, oh, you're so embarrassing. That's sometimes it. you need someone to shout your yeah, corner. You need to, yeah. <laughs> Okay, welcome back uh, to the Fashion Dialogue, and this is the third episode of the second season. I was going to say this is the best episode. <laughs> no? Yeah, I mean, okay, it's okay, going to be, cool. definitely. <laughs> um, but I really think, like, you know, for the last episode of this season, we've got an absolutely incredible guest, Lucy Allen, and uh, there we go, the smile is there. Um, I'm going to let Lucy intro herself, but I feel that... You can tell me about that. Yeah, no. I have to myself. Go on. Yeah, yeah you, you've got this, I'm sure. Um, but the students at Fashion Retail Academy, um, a lot of them, I think it's fair to say, will absolutely look up to you and the brand and probably um, see you as the pinnacle of where they, they could get in their fashion career. So it's so good to have you on. Um, don't, don't believe anything you see. <laughs> it's not, I'm useless. It's downhill from here. Um, so so why don't you tell us about um, Never Fully Dressed? Never fully dressed. And how you started. Okay. Let's go from there. I think it's tough because I think the people that are studying, this is that passion, that's what, then what they want to do. Mm. I used to want to act. I think sometimes when you love something so much, it's harder to make it work because you're, um, I know you're so passionate, you're less, you take everything really more serious maybe, you have this plan that you need to stick to or, or the, this vision that you have. I didn't have any of that. Yeah. So a bit annoying in a way that, so I used to want to act as an unemployed actress and like most, I don't know, actors are, I think it's 80% or whatever of actors are unemployed. And I'm a bit of a, not a workaholic, yeah. kind of, but like I'm not very good at doing nothing. So I um, wasn't getting any work. And my parents were market traders. So they've always, they used to, was bought up in a shop and selling stuff. Like yeah. if I was 12 and a customer wanted what was on my back or my earrings, <laughs> my mum would be like, quick, get them off, like I can sell something here. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just brought up on selling, buying and selling, had that in my blood. So my mum's like, you need a proper job. I've always been able, I've always been creative. I could sew, so I'm actually just a sewing machine, not amazingly, but I could make things, I used to make things for myself. Um, and then made a few bits to sell at the market. So I started to do Spitfields, Portobello Road. But again, at a time when that was a nice up, I say that, I was gonna say a nice entry to market because I don't think you've got that market yeah. mess now, but then you have social. So we didn't have Instagram when I first started, whereas now that's kind of your shop front. And amazing that I'm talking, say 20 years ago, you'd need a massive budget for um, a marketing campaign. Or like there was no small independent brands. You were a massive brand or that was it. So I think what the markets did for me and was that I did it at a time where you'd still have stylists and fashion editors coming down to get things to feature. Yeah. Um, that kind of died a death, but then grew Instagram. So that is your opportunity, really. Yeah. So do you think by having not kind of like a, a regimented kind of fashion background, it kind of helped you be a bit more flexible in what you did when you started to try different things because yeah. you wasn't an expert necessarily? Yeah, and I, I'm still yeah. not an expert at anything. I'm like a classic, I'm not the best designer. I'm not the best anything. I'm a really hard worker. Yeah. And I think the goalposts move all the time. So first of all, I was like, oh, this is fun. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it was just a bit hand to mouth. I was earning money. The markets were amazing, really fun. Um, but I still used to travel about, not with any set focus. Yeah. And then we got a small store. I never wanted a store. I didn't want to follow in my mum and dad's footsteps, although I was doing the markets. But <laughs> with the shop, I was like, it feels a bit of a noose around your neck of rent and stuff. But then I think in turn, it probably subconsciously gave you a bit of responsibility, I had to pay rent, and I think from then, so that was about six years ago, it probably started into a bit of a different business. And I was like, it changes all the time, and then maybe having kids, you get another level of responsibility, or, and then when we, we had an FD start about two years ago, and I think he brought a bit of a corporate structure to it, yeah. that then enabled me to go, okay, what do we wanna, what do I wanna do with this brand? What difference can we make? What do I want it to be? And I think so, my ambition with it has changed through that time, at a time when it was just to earn money or to go on holiday, to then, um, now it is, I'm really conscious of our voice and um, what we can do with that. Yeah, and you've also got employees as well. Yeah, <laughs> To yeah. feed and, and, and to yeah, yeah. look and after their a, families. Yeah, yeah, and that is a responsibility. Because I feel like, say, look, when it was just you, if you never sell a dress again, okay, cool, I'll do something else, because now you've got people to pay. Yeah. And, 
especially, and it's fine when you're busy, but then when you're not, and again, we've got a different structure now that I don't do this part of the business, but say three years ago, I was still paying wages and doing invoices and stuff. So you're, if you're not busy, we were doing a pop-up in LA, and people don't, don't see this side of the business. Yeah. And I used to have to set an alarm at like 3 a.m. every morning to wake up and, on that time zone to move money around just because you knew then invoices or whatever had to be paid at different times yeah. and then you turn up at the pop-up doing all the fun stuff but like no one sees that that back end yeah so yeah there's a lot of responsibility that when it's not as busy probably seems a bit a heavier weight to carry so do you think you did you experience any like real um kind of challenges back in the early days when you started your store um, like you said, you had to be, you know, pay for security and you had yeah. to, yeah, no, make I, rent I don't think, or... I don't think I, well, again, you're lucky with the market that is cheap. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was £80, whatever it was for the day, until you had the shop, I suppose. No, not, I don't think I've ever really felt that pressure. But again, I started the business when I was living at home. So I think if you're... And you don't really think things through, I think, when you're younger. Now I think I'm a bit of a scaredy cat. Like, <laughs> uh, a model the other day was saying she's moving to Miami in January. I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds crazy. Yeah. Like, I do, what are you I think, doing? Yeah, no, I know. Whereas I used to travel about, like I yeah. went to America when I was 18. Like you just, you do anything. Whereas now you get a bit more sensible when you get older. And I think, oh yeah, maybe looking back, I'd be nervous to do that journey again. Yeah. Which is, so I'm lucky that I started a business when I was living at home with no overheads, no kids, no mortgage. Um, and without that fear. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think when you're older, a lot of people have maybe gone into redundancy now, or if you're starting a new career path when you're older, I think that feels, that's a bigger risk level. You'd, I think yeah. you'd be more nervous, and rightly yeah, so. Indeed. And what time did you, did you start at the markets when you first? I used to do, I've seen someone the other day, yeah. so I used to sew. So if I've had a really good seller, like on the front, I used yeah. to do. What, you do one-off one -off pieces or? No. Uh, or, uh, <laughs> Both. I used to customise, I'd go, yeah. that's how I started manufacturing eventually because the haberdashery I was using for trims yep. um, and everything used to be one size. So, because I couldn't sew a fitted dress, it'd just be a big oversized caftan -y shape that worked. And I think that kind of came into play with yeah. now of using that product or how to tie it for different ways and different shapes and making it work for the customer. I think subconsciously that's kind of where it started. but. Um, so yeah, I'd go to the haberdashery, think, oh, that trim's amazing. I can sew that onto this jumper or make that dress. And then, yeah, I'll come back to that. But I say, so that haberdashery then said, oh, we can actually make the product for you if you want. Um, so I was like, oh, okay. So then they started, and that family had the factory in China, um, which is rare to start in China, yeah. on those small runs. So they'd be making like 20, 30 pieces for me, which is kind of unheard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely unheard of. Yeah, so I don't go to China, not China. Small yeah, runs I know. at all. So it just doesn't seem to matter. That's how that developed, really, yeah. with that like, fa real family business. And they were amazing. They must have seen so much in you as a person and your product, I maybe. I think they just <laughs> like a pound note. So I feel like if they could sell 30 dresses, they'd sell 30 dresses. Yeah. But yeah, they were, they were, we had a really nice relationship with them. But yeah, going back to the market. So if I had a, there was a jumper I'm thinking of in my head when I tell this story, and it was like pearl kind of bow um, on a big oversized, a bit of a bat wing knit. And I'd sew them up. And if I say oh, I was busy on the Friday, I'd then stay up till, I don't know, two, three in the morning sewing more. And then you'd get up at about four to do, depends what market yeah. you were doing, to leave. I didn't have a car when I first started. So I used to lug all my stuff, suitcases, and I used to be jealous. My best friends at the market used to sell these little feather headbands. And they used to turn <laughs> up with a bag and a, and a mirror. That mirror was, was the biggest thing. I used to have to have rails and hangers and everything. It was a nightmare. So yeah, suitcases, mirrors. And then my cousin did it with me. She used to do it at Portobello. And I always laugh because she's beautiful, my cousin. And so we'd be taking a few suitcases each. And I'd turn around and she's already up the top, like some fella has seen her and helped her, this damsel in distress. And there's me, like the cart horse, just oh. still lugging this stuff around. Thinking, if only I was prettier, I could have got oh, someone no. to carry me stuff up. But maybe that was character building. Do you know what? It's a great incentive to sell all of them pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to bring it home. Yeah, it's exactly. too heavy to take home. Yeah. So it's good, but I think that work ethic, like, I love anyone, even if I look at a CV now and they're coming in for a director position, whatever, whatever it is. Um, if they've got like shop floor on their CV or that customer facing role or something with that 
yeah. that gives that work ethic to me. I, yeah. I think that's a lot about that candidate. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I don't like the word grafted, but it, it yeah, really no, is. It, it yeah. really but is. That's what I think that's what, and that's what yeah. was instilled in me. My, I'm one of five, so yeah. the twins are younger, but my brother and sister are the older. Like, we're all in different worlds, but I just think that was what was instilled in us, just that work ethic. Yeah. And I think they've both done well. Yeah. So where did you get your inspiration from? Of the pieces, but also the brand itself? Um... I don't know, I said, I thought I've always been creative. I think if I look back, I suppose my mum always dressed crazy. I don't want to say, yeah. I was going to say amazing. I think a bit more crazy. Like I was always the last one picked up at school and she'd come in with cowboy hat and some <laughs> crazy, do you know what I mean? So yeah. again, I didn't realise, but I think they were quite just fun. I feel like, mm. and, I, and, I, and I actually think that is a thread that runs through the brand and the handwriting that I want someone to buy that dress and just have a good time in it. Yeah. Whether it's day or at work and go and have an amazing day or go and wear that to your birthday dinner and just have the best night. And I think that comes from probably, I suppose, my mum's the inspiration of that. I feel like she just, just wants to have fun in what she's doing. So I think whether it's conscious or not, I think when you're designing, that's what you want. I think you want a woman to feel good. Yep. To put, and I've actually gone back to doing our fit sessions. So I used to, when it was like three of us in the office, obviously we'd sample. I'd put it on and say whether to book it or not. I've not done that for quite a few years and then just recently I've gone back to doing it again. So when the sample comes, I'll do the fit session because I want to know what that feels like for a customer. You yeah. put that on and if you feel sexy, if you feel good, you think, yeah, cool. I want, that's what I want the customer to feel. Um, let's book it. And if not, if you put it on and you, you don't stand very well or you think, oh, no, I don't like then we won't. So I think that's the inspiration of it. You just want people to have a good time, I suppose, whether that's through colour or shape or print. Yeah. I think it's funny because when we turned up at the offices today, I felt that. I felt I was coming into, I don't know, a family. You know, yeah, everyone was well, friendly and it, it, it feels like. good yeah, here. Yeah. When I talk about my mum's loft where we used to work, like Jackie, who's our head yeah. ops and merch, yeah. she used to do that. It started, again, because I've got the younger twin sisters, so the first employees I had were mums from the, their school of just they maybe had a career had children and just wanted a little part-time job and jackie's still with us now and worked her way up or um he's a, a that is my extended yeah. family really so can you tell us about the never fully dressed um pre-love scheme yeah um great idea by the way thank you so we i think we've been doing that for a good three years yep. um, and it started I was doing a story I remember I was with Georgia in Broadgate Circle in Liverpool Street we had been at an event and I was wearing an, an old never fully dressed dress so I was on a story on Instagram and the amount of people that were saying oh, please if like if you ever want to sell that dress I'll I'll have it from you and I was like okay and it, straight from then there was a like two wins to that basically one if you've missed out on a piece um, that you really wanted to get your hands on, and that sold out piece, you get to have that. Yeah. Two, just that whole element of circular fashion. So this might be old to me. I might think, oh, actually, yeah, no, I wanted to buy this new dress, but either I couldn't afford it, or I didn't want that much in my wardrobe, or I felt guilty because I had too many clothes. So you can sell that piece. So say it's your piece yeah. now, I'm getting confused. Um, so say that's your old dress. You can now sell that back to us. Yeah and use your points that we give you to buy newness on site. Gotcha. You get points to, um, and then we then repurpose that dress. So yeah, yeah. whether we sell it on, we use Depop a yeah. lot at the minute, and we are looking to kind of bring that in house yeah. on our own platform. But it just felt at the time, again, so that was a good few years ago. We didn't have that tech, we didn't have IT, we didn't have a development team. So we use Depop as that outlet. Um, and yeah, we've built, I say we've got about over half a million followers on Depop now. So we use oh, wow. it for, yeah, like... Um, That's good. Again, we don't, I'm, I'm that type. My kids have dinner tonight, what went off three days ago. Like, I have no wastage in my life, <laughs> let alone, like, business as well. Yeah. So we sell samples, anything that we can sell or that is just gathering dust or, or is just a waste or that could have a better home or just to really um, encourage that circular fashion, yeah. we do, we do on there. It's so good. I mean, especially the samples as well. I mean, yeah. you're not wasting. People love it. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, no. And you really try to have nothing in. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no, I think that's amazing. Piece. You know when you're saying like, 
Like no one in the world has this dress. Nobody. Like, yeah. So yeah. And it's even better if there's a slight kind of flaw to it. You yeah, know, yeah. and that'll always be always the best perfect. sellers. If they do yeah. a Depop Live now, like everyone will be like, oh my gosh, why didn't you make it? Or they want that dress. I think, oh, I didn't think it was great. So we didn't make it, but then it makes that piece even more special. Yeah. It's amazing you've got so many followers in Depop as well. It must be like a really yeah, I good... Think, well, I think we also launched when they were new. So oh, a little bit like how come we, we've grown with Instagram. We kind of were there. I've just been around forever, maybe. <laughs> we were around when that was just first starting. Yeah. So um, I suppose there were less accounts to follow or less... Um, people doing what we were doing at of the your time. your size as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Rather than one-off pieces that yeah. someone's... You know, yeah, because right, I, I do think of it as a younger platform. Yeah. Um, so even when we're going through samples, there's certain things that you know we'll send on Depot more so than sometimes we'll put them in the shop or whatever. So it's a certain customer, but yeah, it's good. So they get credit to on, spend online. To spend on yeah, a new, yeah, to a spend new dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can continue being a customer yeah, of yours, yeah. but also yeah, getting yeah, the new stuff. Naughty scheme and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So the pre love scheme, is that part of the brand's sort of future sustainability or current sustainability? Yeah, like I say, I'm, I, I feel like I was. Before sustainability was that buzzword it is, yeah. um, I felt like we just had a few of those initiatives and ways of working before it was. A conversation, a yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like even now we we chat with I, I think Pengai are amazing. Um, and they're like scientists in fabrics and chemicals and so or whatever they use to. But they now have like a peppermint treatment, for example, that you don't have to wash your um, garment every time you use it. For example, I don't know why I've gone into this. No, but that's so good because you're because you're saving. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So, so when we talk, I mean, sustainability is such a massive conversation. Huge, so, it, yeah. and we've actually just got a new department. We've got a new um, head of for us. So, and the reason in employing her, sorry, I feel like I'm really jumping in this conversation, but was just to have a bit of guidance there. Because, like I said, I feel like we were doing things before, um, but we never spoke about them or were always a bit nervous to say, oh, actually, this is what we do. I think this is sustainable, or um, because you're nervous of that. Um, greenwashing or you don't want to false advertise, you don't want to pretend you're doing something that, oh actually maybe but we're actually not very good in this area. So I think it's nice for her to give that bit of guidance. I think something that works for us, we have really open, honest conversation with our customer. So I feel like at least we have that, that we go, okay this is where we are, this is what we're working on. And um, So yeah, we have pre love which plays into the, the whole sustainability. Again, we do look at sustainability as a business has sustainability and ethics. So that whole, basically just being a good company yeah. is just as important to us as um, the origins of a fabric or if that's um, recycled or sustainable. So it's all important, like yeah. supporting working mums or having a nice um, staff culture. Yeah is important for us as well as, but then we, we just need to work on it on yeah. every level. It's, it's just hard work and there's yeah. no easy answer. So we're looking at fabric origin at our carbon footprint. So we're bringing a lot more production back into the UK from next yeah. year. We've got two factories lined up to start that. So that will be amazing. Um, the wastage, I say the pre-loved, I'm trying to think. We'll look up at Nina at our, yeah. <laughs> What else do we do? I was just speaking about it earlier, but there's it, on so many levels that you can just be doing better. And I say the charity work that we do. So we've always done that since we started. Um, the dream would be to be a B Corp and just be a better yeah. company. The industry's had negative connotations, yeah, and but rightly so. So if we can do a little bit better than what either we were doing or what the industry were doing, or leave, still do what we love because we love creativity and we love clothes and. Yeah all of that side of it and have that fun, but more consciously. Yeah, I, I think what's key is like, we're just always evolving, aren't we? As, yeah. as, a, as, a, as a brand, as a yeah. business, and you're moving forward and you mentioned um, the um, the charity work yeah. that you do. So can you tell us about the charity Yeah, we've always done that. Again, uh, with the sustainability and charity work ethics, we're, yeah. lu we're lucky, I think everyone who works, for, works with us, um, are good people. I made a bit of a conscious thing a, a few years ago. We worked with someone who just wasn't very nice. And I was like, I'm just not going to work with any not nice people. Yeah. So luckily, there's quite a lot of integrity about what we do and everyone just wants to do better. So 
Christian charity, but again, under that sustainability department, now we have someone who just focuses on our um, charity relationships. And that's just always been about, like the iconic boob tea. We've supported oh, yeah, Mind yeah. Charity. I think it's how, however much we've raised, it's over 50 grand or whatever we've raised for Mind Charity. Amazing. We'll pick a charity who either our customers choose, our staff feel strongly about, um, We'll put a poll out on Instagram. Like I say, that, that conversation that we have, are there any charities that people feel strongly about? Let us know and we can look into supporting them. Yeah. But back from when I did the first clothes show, we, I sold these, sorry if anyone bought one, awful pearl <laughs> necklace things for a fiver each. We raised a raised five grand for the big issue. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. So it's just always, it's something that I used to want to do when I was younger. I suppose just because I kind of, it's going to be annoying to people watching, but like fell into what I'm doing. It has been hard work, but um, for me now, it's about what do I get out of my job, having like career satisfaction, I suppose, and that is what I used to love doing. So if I can bring that to my everyday now, and that's something that we can look at now that I've got a bit more clout, a bigger voice, or that we can use to do better. Then that's what we'll try to do. Our collaborations, something that never fully dress, really kind of buy into. Um, whether it's like charity or whether it's collaborations with um, marketing or influencers or um, or other brands working with other brands yeah. to create a new. Again, product. we're still learning and, and moving in that space. Yeah. Um, charity, yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, anything for us that um, is feels honest that that feels right works better yeah. um, so we don't really do paid posts or anything and this is a bit of a new phenomenon anyway and we have done bits in the past but it's not something that we feel strongly about or that yeah. we get excited about and, yeah. and then I think that comes across so people that we work with if there's a good strong relationship and it's a long-term thing then that's what we're about anything that has a bit more integrity you don't want someone posting about a dress and then posting about teeth whitening the next yeah, day. Exactly. Like, that, that, that's yeah. just not our customer. That works for some people, cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not really right for us. So yeah, more um, involved relationships and say yeah. partnerships, collaborations, definitely. Because I feel like then you've with got customers. two heads. Yeah, with we've your got, customers well, our, and... that's sort of like our tagline, yeah. our customer is our influencer. Yeah. Thanks, you've brought it to that. <laughs> I should remember that. But yeah, they are, they're the voice for us, yeah. so that's the opinion we love and that's who we should serve. I completely agree. I mean, we come back to that, to be yeah, fair. We're gonna, okay, there's cool. going to be a piece on social media, I'm sure. Cool. I've got a few questions in mind. Cool. But um, do you do pop-ups as well? Like, just going back to sort of the collaboration, yeah. of that angle. Yeah, I'm trying to think um, of the first one we did, actually. But I suppose that comes back, actually, we're now speaking about maybe doing the markets again. I was going to say, the marketplace is kind of a pop-up, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like your original that was just a one-day pop-up, yeah. yeah. Before, Before it was called pop a pop-up. <laughs> yeah. So pre-COVID, yeah, we used to do like a few international pop-ups a year. Oh, we used yeah? to do LA, New York. I love Copenhagen. New York. Yeah, I love New York. Yes. Um, so now for me, with the kids, I'm like, oh, we to my husband, we just need to do a pop-up here and then really that's just my break from the yeah. kids. But yeah, love, you get to travel and we've done it before. So say Copenhagen when we did one, we didn't really have a customer base there, but it was for us to test or meet people and it's quite, it's not that expensive for us to do really. So it was just a nice bit of a marketing piece and to explore. Or it might be where we'll put on Instagram, where do you want to see us? They'll say LA, and we've got a really big following there already, for example. So we'll use them for different reasons and they're fun. Yeah. yeah. And for, you know, like shoots and uh, yeah. content for social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah it's yeah, a bit like, of a 360. It plays yeah. into all of that. Test the market yeah. out there as well. Maybe you can get yeah. some inspiration. Yeah. I love different fashion that, so. in, in different cities as well. Definitely. So we've really missed that the last couple of years. Even when I went on the tube for the first time after yeah. COVID, I'm like, wow, that person looks nice. Well, you can see what, yeah, that just life, like yeah. filtering in that you missed for so long. So yeah, definitely if you go, even further afield. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Do you compliment someone if you see someone on the tube yeah. and you're like, oh, that's a nice dress, yeah, I love definitely. that. Have you ever had anyone where um, they've gone, oh, it's a never fully dressed and they haven't realised the connection between the dress and who they're talking to? If I'm wearing every dress. No, oh, if that... someone else is, if, if someone no. on the tube is. No, I've had it, like people ask me and if I'm embarrassed and they go, oh, I like your dress, what's it from? And I'm just like, oh, it's from never fully dressed. Like I would never go, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. My, my husband will sometimes be like, yeah, she designed that. Like, I'm like, oh, you're so embarrassing. Is sometimes it? you need someone to shout your yeah, corner. You need to, you? Yeah, 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 it's, it's embarrassing. Yeah. When, I used to think that at the market, like if my friend went to the toilet, I'd be able to stand on her stool and like sell out of everything. But then when you're on your own, you get on your own stool selling your stuff. Maybe it's a British thing. You're quite self-deprecating. You don't mm. want to boast about what you do yourself, yeah, do you? indeed. So what's your favourite pop-up? Uh, so I far. think the last think... LA one we did yeah, LA, was amazing. Yeah. I, say, I, I lived in LA for a little bit, West okay. Hollywood. Okay. Um, I suppose there's a little bit of nostalgia, and I think this, I know it sounds bad, but it's probably the most successful one. Yeah. So I think when you take the most money, that's always a nice buffer to it. Really nice crowd of people that came and that we met, we shot a lot there. It was hard work at it. I think that time, I always get the most jet lag with LA. Like yeah. New York, you can just go for a long weekend. I felt LA was tough, and like I said before, like money side of stuff. I don't know if we were that. We weren't flying at that time. I can't really remember, but we couldn't have been. Um, so yeah, it was, it's hard work. Like a, it's draining. Yeah. And again, I just feel old lately. Like if I was to do a pop up now, I'm so lucky. The girls are amazing. They'll come with the van and unload. But I was still doing so much myself. Like my body, and I say you do get older. Every pop up you do, you think, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm old. I'm getting older, so but it's good. It's hard. I love hard work. But it's also good to, you know, give that opportunity to your staff as well. Yeah. I remember the first time I went abroad with a company. It was the best thing ever. It didn't matter that I had to get up at two o'clock yeah, in the morning yeah, but to get a four day. You love what you do. Yeah, of Absolutely course. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Loved it. Well, there's a, a girl that started with us this year, and she's amazing. She's actually working under the sustainability umbrella now. Yeah. And we did a shoot in Ibiza not that long ago. And I felt a bit emotional when she, she had to leave early to get a, we were still shooting, to get a flight and she was so amazing on this job. I was like, um, and she was, I was like, oh, thank you so much. Cause she was, had worked so hard. She was been, and she was like, no, thank you so much. And it was a yeah. bit emotional. You know, she was going, I was like, oh, I felt a bit teary. Cause like, yeah, she was grateful. And, but then you're so grateful for your staff as well. You can not do anything without yeah. any of them. So, I've stalked your Instagram profile. I'm <laughs> like, putting it out there, like stalked completely. Um, and I've noticed you've got like a massive following. It's like, you know, brand's dream, I guess. Um, over 1 million followers. Um, yeah. And uh, the posts are great. Um, can you tell us, you know, how that affects the business, having such a huge social media following? I, mean, um, I think you get a bit nervous, having, do you know what I mean? In a way, when you, you feel a bit more responsible, yeah. Um, but I did grow with, like when you say I think other brands, I think we were quite early. Yeah. It was not as conventional, my route to market. So with the market and stuff, so I didn't have anyone to pass anything by. Or I suppose when you've got these big brands now, when Instagram first came about, they're probably presenting it to their board going, oh, can we invest some money here? Or let's try and get followers here. A little bit like what TikTok is doing now. I think that's, it bucks the market because you can't go in with, intention or with strategy as much it is quite run by the people whatever algorithm i mean it's over i'm too old for that but um that's kind of what instagram was at the beginning mm. do you know what i mean it was a real, real life. community was, yeah, yeah yeah like they were like who are massive influencers now you would just chat to them do you know I mean, because it was a smaller world. It was like, oh, this is an amazing new platform that people can be creative or share stuff yeah. on. And no one knew where it was going as well. No, because so you everyone... had no business intention. Now, exactly. obviously, how much you can advertise it, and we do a lot. Like we use it as that's part of our big part of our marketing strategy. But at the time, that wasn't about. So you're, it was so organic, quite innocent, naive in how you were using it. And maybe then, just that's how we how it grew, which yeah. is a lovely part of it and I still think there's amazing things about social media yeah. um, there's a lot of probably not great stuff um, a lot of good I think if you, if you use it well and you use it with integrity and you think what you're doing is yeah. is right and you're putting out there for a reason then I think it's amazing and the good thing is back then I guess when you sold someone a dress they would wear it and, and share it constantly so yeah. it's like the old school kind of word of word to mouth, word, word of mouth, mouth yeah, 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 um, yeah. kind of advertising, wasn't it? Yeah. Even now I see brands that, I, maybe not actually, brands that I like are probably savvy on social, but yeah. big companies. And you look at their Instagram and like, there's no engagement, there's no 
The voice, I think it's quite rare for us as well that I'm still, actually, I never used to be as present on our social, only probably since COVID, but that um, I'm there, that our voice runs through that and that we're really engaged with our customer. I think that has helped us in building those followers, in, in growing with them. They've been part of that journey. I've got so many customers who started buying with us at the markets and then they might travel or that's what's so amazing about social that you have no um, limit on who you can reach. So then they'll travel and that word of mouth is amazing, but just on a crazy scale. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I say we started at a time before there was digital marketing really yeah. um, on a human level or something that I understood. Um, so you were doing things with integrity or just like I say, with that naivety that you're creating something or want to put it out there to share. It was like a forum, like a, an old chat room of yeah. just, oh, hey, I like how you dress. It really knew there was a novelty to that. Um, yeah, and it was nice to create that community. And people just shared what they liked a lot more, I feel. Yeah, there's no, pay, you're not paid to share something. So again, yeah. you believe someone. So if I really liked how you dressed, they, because you didn't have the, I forget the word, like, you weren't aware of everything that comes with that then. Yeah. You didn't think about things. There weren't filters, or there weren't, you, if you really go back on people's oh, pages, yeah, you'll look this. on like, <laughs> Um, there were trends of certain filters yeah. that they were using, all that frame, that, like, yeah. the oh, lines around, talking. whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I think that like, when they had Vine, because like, you can do video on Instagram, you had Vine for a little bit, and then we never really got into Snapchat. But I mean, there's been so many platforms over time. Um, Instagram has just seemed to stick for us. I feel like that's the age of customer that works for us. We've grown with Instagram. I suppose we shop in a certain way and we share and. Yeah, communicate that way. Do you think the brand without social media and Instagram in particular, do you think the brand would be as big as what it is today if that platform wasn't there? No, because a bit like what I touched on before, that you'd then have to, maybe it would have been a different business. I couldn't have been as creative. I would have had to go and pitch to investors or to people to get budget to then do a big campaign in that kind of 90s media world. Um, so no, how else can you, you'd have to go and get shops, yeah. which, and then if it was in, do you know what I mean? I'd have shops all over the world and then COVID hit. You'd yeah, be, like, so, huge, Yeah, huge it just gives you risk. that agility. Um, and just, I say that I don't really work in our shop anymore. My mum does, she, no. but that period where I didn't work in the shop, we didn't have that customer fit. This was before social was as big. You didn't have that customer feedback. That is invaluable. Mm. So the fact that we've got that, I can ask a question, should we make this in pink or blue? And they will tell us what to make. They've already given you, like they've given you your market research, they've given you your, what you're gonna take all that guesswork out of it, because you're making the product for them. So you take inspiration from your customers? Yeah, that, we said, like our customer is our influencer. That is who I genuinely value each customer. They worked hard for that 70 pounds to go and spend on a dress. If someone's doing that, and choosing to do that with you. That's a big investment that they've made to you. That's a trust that they've put in you. So I think you have to respect and, and value that. A lot of people at the Fashion Retail Academy would want to know what advice you would have um, if they were to start their own brand. Um, and compete with you. Work hard. <laughs> yeah, don't, maybe I don't want to give too much advice. Um, work hard. Um, I wish I had dreamt bigger earlier on, because I say I was still traveling about, and, and I think only then when we got that sh the shop maybe six years ago, I think that was a bit of a new chapter for us. So I used to shun, so I used to shun those, maybe the bigger questions. My sister's a bit more in investment and mud, like she's got a proper job. And she'd ask me questions about business side of stuff. I think I used to know what I was doing, but I'd be like, oh no, I didn't want to talk about it. I knew how to make a dress, or I knew how to dress, but. Um, so I think an awareness of um, all areas of that business and sorry, and I suppose quite early on knowing what your skill set is, what you're good at and what you're not good at. I think it was the lady who has Spanx. She's amazing. So if, listen to her podcast as well if you want to start a business. Okay. Um, she says like as soon as you can employ someone, then do. I think I've never been of that type. I've never had a credit card. Like if I... If I can't afford something, I won't buy it. But I think sometimes you need to push yourself a bit more or 
even now, like, I think we've we've just changed, we've turned a bit of a corner, but probably until a couple of years ago, like, only when we were so, so stretched, probably to the detriment, maybe some people have left because they're like, oh, this is too much work, like, it's not sustainable, then we'll employ someone new. But now we're at a point where we go, okay, where do we want to be in three years' time? I need to get that foundation ready now, because otherwise I'm never going to get there. Yeah. So for us, whether it's sustainability or our employment structure or the size of the business we want to be, work back from where you want to be. Whereas I think I wasn't that conscious when I first started and I was just kind of rolling with it. Yeah. Whereas that's changed for me in the last few years and I think that's been a bit of a game changer. Is it hard to tell uh, what role you need at what particular time? You know, what yeah, was your the, first I was gonna say, that being said, don't role? be lazy. I feel like it's quite easy for people to go, oh, oh, I need help or I need an assistant. Yeah. No, like that's, that's something completely different. So it's then knowing that difference. Yeah. Um, you're, you want to employ in the areas that you're not good at. Yeah. So that, to try and identify that really. So if I was an amazing designer, but couldn't do any accounting work, that's what I need to employ. But if I was really good at maths and these, and that business side of the, the structure and the strategy, if I could do that, but then I'd need a better creative to make stuff that resonated on social media, whatever it is, look for the qualities that you're missing. Yeah. And while we're on the team aspect, yeah. what's your like favourite thing about the Never Fully Dressed team? What's, you know, what brings you together? Or I what, think that family-ness that we had before and that real yeah. genuine, which again is hard, how can you, there's no answer, what's it called, like a recipe for that, but yeah. um, wanting to do well. So if you, it's, it's a small team, for I think the size of business. So if you do something really amazing, everyone is really pleased for you. Equally, I suppose the downside of that, then if something goes wrong, you're quite exposed. But even in that case, it would be like, okay, so how do we work together to not do that again? Mm. Rather than that you just get nothing out of blaming or look for a, yeah. that was someone's fault in a different way. It'd be like, okay, what happened here? And how can we not do that again? Everyone wants to learn or do better. But I think that genuine team spirit, I think is quite special. So is that what you look for when you're hiring for Never Fully Dressed staff? And also, um, I've heard that you've you've actually gone to um, Fashion Retail Academy and had, um, yeah, we've had some placement. students yeah, and placements yeah, yeah. at ne Never Fully Dressed. How has that worked out for you? Yeah, good, really good. It's nice, as a business, we the team, like the, the accountancy team will be sitting next to merchandising, which would be sitting next to e -com. So I think for someone at FRA to come, if they've really studied merchandising, I think it's nice for them to get a feel mm. of a business. I do think our business is quite unique. It depends, I think they need to, it's hard to say need to know, but what kind of business they want to go into. Because if you're going into a bigger corporate um, structure, you're very much doing your job. Yeah. You're quite pigeonholed with that. But then in a way, I think if someone interviews for us and they have a real specific passion, I think that's good for me to see. We get so many people, and this is awful, they'll come for a customer service role and they want to be a stylist. Everyone wants to be a stylist or an influence. I think they see our Instagram yeah. and think that they're just going to come and dress up. So I think when someone comes and they say, no, I'm really passionate about buying, accounting, they'll still have that creativity in the atmosphere in the office and that part of that team but I think if they've got that passion in there that's a turn on for me yeah and the work ethic I just yeah I like I mean I think it's good for the students to come in and you know at least they can dip in and dip out of different things I guess that's what a placement is quite, for exactly. yeah so even though they might have studied something they go yeah. oh actually that looks like that. maybe my yeah my skill set would be yeah. work to that it's quite good we a lot of our staff have been interns like the head of our digital creative, head of international, like a lot of people. And it's kind of finding where their feet are and where their skill set lies, and then we can steer them into that space. Yeah. And it's quite nice that they've been grown with us as a business. And sometimes it's rare to you know, study a particular, be specialised in a particular area and go into a career in that. A lot of the times you need to you know, have a placement and dip your, your toes in other places to see exactly where you fit or where your skill set lies. Yeah, definitely. So, I think it's so like sustainability, which is a new area. Yeah. Maybe people are studying that now, but the new things that evolve in the industry, that, oh, that actually wasn't, like social media wasn't a thing. Yeah. When my generation was studying fashion, it would probably be like classic 
media, you know, market it or like in, in other, yeah, in other areas. So things are changing all the time. So have a bit of flexibility. Don't be um, work shy to do things on the side as well, because you need, you might be studying or have a placement in one area, but oh, actually I've seen this and if someone come to me and they'd already done their homework, actually I've been doing a few courses, which one of our staff members have, and it was amazing to see. On the side, I've been studying X, Y, Z. I was like, oh, okay, cool, I didn't know that. So then we can steer you into that. So she's not shunning her current day job, um, but just showing interest and passion and enthusiasm, which is invaluable, again, when you're employing. And what's been one of the biggest achievements for yourself and the brand? I don't know, a little bit even like how we're talking, I feel like I've, I've been jumping about because I feel like I've just been about for a long time. I feel like, not this easy to make another one, but do you know what I mean? You do that once and yeah, that's amazing. But I think having been about for a long time as a, um, like I said, we've never had investment. It's just been like a, a woman, like a hard working woman, I think, yeah. has got us to where we are. Um, I think that more the, the the not the slog but the, the endurance. I think sometimes that's the hardest thing when we might have a bit like a marriage. I mean, like people have like a five year bad patch. Yeah, but it's so easy nowadays to chuck that towel in or do whatever, but then to just keep working and making something work. Yeah. I think says a lot. And then maybe yeah, in it thirty does. years that that's something a different thing in itself, but something to be proud of. I was going to ask actually, where do you see yourself in? Well, this is not an interview, it's yeah, in no. a traditional sit down for a job interview, yeah, but yeah. I feel that that's the question. You know, where you always get asked at the end yeah, of I'm, a. I'm, an I am interview. looking now as well at what my role is. Like I said, I've got a certain skill set, and mm. I think I've taken never fully dressed to a level. And I am interested now in exploring maybe what that next stage of the journey looks like. Yeah. Um, what do we want to achieve? Um, what do we want to create? What do we want that? legacy because I still want to be going but really I think I'm really um, passionate and believe in what we can do and just make it like seeing that play out I feel like we can do what we do now but just on a massive scale and helping more fe people have fun dressed up in color and, and just having a yeah yeah I think we can do what we do now but better and, and bigger I think bigger and better yeah do you know what it's been an absolute pleasure <laughs> to sit down with someone who's done so much and to just like nod your way through the interview thinking okay i could take something back in hopefully my life you can, yeah hopefully um, i don't know if i just mumble but no, yeah hopefully no, no, there's no. something that you can take there is a lot and and people watching this from the fashion retail academy will be so inspired um and what you've done is absolutely incredible and especially from such like beginnings the marketplace and then and building from that and not um, having investment, like you said, um, and yeah, so it's a real pleasure to have you Thank as the final episode of Fashion Dialogue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.